Welcome to Silk Riders engine teardown video where I'm taking this engine from a 2020 KTM 450 EXCF and I'm tearing it down all the way from the valve cover down to the crankshaft. We're going to pull the engine apart completely and then uh, we're basically going to have it ready to inspect each part in there, each bearing, everything in the valve train. Um, the pumps, the water pumps, the oil pumps, you know, basically everything. And uh, we're gonna finish off by taking the crankshaft out. The crankshaft is a little bit difficult uh, to service, so I'm using a specialist for that, uh, just because of the balancing and uh, removing the uh, crank pin and the uh, connecting rod, you need a hydraulic press. So I actually have all the tools required um, to tear the engine down. These are a couple flywheel pullers. Uh, primary gear, uh, flywheel. I also have this, um, we're gonna need this uh, crankcase splitter tool. Uh, so these are all KTM. Um, this tool, you can probably get away with getting an aftermarket version because, uh, you know, dirt bike engines, they're all pretty similar. So there are crankcase splitting tools available that could probably work on this. Uh, the reason I, I go with KTM tools because they're not that much more expensive than the aftermarket ones. It's not like BMW or something where things cost 10 times the price of aftermarket, but um, also the KTM ones are just guaranteed to fit. So uh, it takes a long time to order this stuff. So that's why for me, it's fine getting just the one tool from KTM and uh, using it forever. So uh, one other tool we have is we have the piston clip remover. So this is something you turn, you put into the piston uh, to remove the clip. Um, it's much easier to do with tools than with pliers or something because it's just gonna fall into the engine and you're not gonna be able to get it. And the locking screw, we'll show you that's gonna be an initial, uh, the initial teardown. This is uh, useful to lock the engine in TDC. We'll show you why we need that. So let's get started with this. And we're gonna start by taking off the valve cover uh, and just easy stuff. And then we'll move on to the cylinder head. All right, so we're gonna start off by removing the oil from this engine. You should already have the oil out since we did that before we took the engine out. Take out all the oil screens, take out your uh, plugs from the bottom of the engine. Set those aside and also remove the oil filter. Now my oil filter is already out since I drained the oil. Set these aside. Next thing we'll do is remove the starter motor, which is held in by two screws right here and it just goes into the uh, engine on the flywheel here. All right, now when you start sliding this out, uh, there's an O-ring here positioned so that it, uh, seals the engine oil in, but it might get stuck, so keep that in mind. Set this aside as well. Next, we're gonna take the spark plug out, and you'll need a uh, 14 millimeter spark plug socket. The reason why you need a spark plug socket is because there's a magnet, first of all, and second of all, it's a little bit longer to access the recess in the cylinder head for that spark plug. So a regular socket usually won't fit since it's short. There she is. Pretty good shape too. Set that aside. Now, one thing you actually want to keep in mind uh, before you start an engine job is you probably want a bunch of parts ordered pre pre uh, engine teardown since those take some time to ship and uh, 
you don't want to have the engine just uh, spread around your workbench for too long because you know things might fall off the table, they get lost, you forget what you're doing. Um, one thing that is actually you need to know ahead of time before actually ordering something. Mostly, pretty much everything here is a, is just a regular part number from the uh, from the parts fish on KTM's website, but. The piston is a special case because there's two piston sizes for the, uh, I think all KTMs, the dirt bikes at least. And the piston size is printed on the uh, cylinder head, okay, on the top uh, ceiling surface. Now, I thought actually you have to take the cylinder, uh, actually it's printed on the, cyl the cylinder. The cylinder head, I thought you had to take it off to, to see it, but I realized when I took it off that it's printed right here on top of the timing chain cover. And if you zoom in here, I can show it to you. And it's, the timing chain is right here. And you can see that there's a one printed on that, stamped into the, uh, to the uh, cylinder. So this is the top of the cylinder. I thought you had to take off the cylinder head to see that. But before you order your parts and your piston, you can find which cylinder size uh, and subsequently piston size because the cylinder and the piston both come in two sizes you want to get them matching so if you have a one here you need to get a size one piston and a size one cylinder but usually you're not going to be replacing any cylinders anytime soon that's probably for a thousand hours at least next we're going to remove the valve cover I already uh, I was already in here to check something out before, so that's why these are loose. So once you pull the valve cover off, set that aside. Make sure you get the gasket. Now we're going to take the alternator cover off. Some of these screws apparently have washers, but uh, you know, if you uh, if you forget which ones, which I will, uh, I'm just going to go back to the parts fiche when I uh, reassemble this again. Instead of trying to remember what screws go where where there's washers so i'm just gonna put all these screws together and then when i put it back together i'll uh, check which washers go where okay pull that off there's a gasket in there as well uh this is magnetized Obviously, because there's electromagnets in there, that's how your alternator works. So there's your gasket. And we have another gasket. All right, put that aside. All right, next we have to position the engine at top dead center. Uh, that's really important for a few reasons. Uh, we're removing the camshaft, which is here, and we're also gonna to get to the crankshaft eventually. Uh, so actually, when you put the engine back together, obviously the crankshaft and the camshaft, they have to be perfectly aligned in top dead center, or else if you just put the crankshaft in in any little position and the camshaft in, and then put the timing chain on, <laughs> your engine's not gonna work because you're gonna be uh, your valves are going to be opening when the piston, you know, is in the wrong position. So you need the engine in top dead center. Um, now, when the engine's on a bike, it's easy to do because you have the rear wheel. Uh, you can sort of just turn the rear wheel and get the timing chain aligned. Uh, the sorry, the camshaft aligned. Uh, without the wheel, uh, there's a pretty cool way you can try this. Um, just take your uh, front sprocket and put it back onto the uh, the drive gear, the drive, uh, whatever you call it, the spleens here. 
use your clutch uh, hub removal tool and actually I just put this thing around here and uh, tighten it up right? and then you can just pull it uh, or turn it this way and what you need to do is you need to get that little uh, dimple there not that one not that one this dimple here aligned with the camshaft retaining bracket so it's basically at the center here and it's aligned and once you have that aligned you're going to take out this screw with the fat washer and uh, usually when the engine's on the bike and we're doing a valve uh, uh, valve shins usually you take this washer off and put this back in because then this locks the engine in place now the reason why we're going to use the special tool is because the since we're going to pull off the uh, the clutch cover, you're not going to have anything to lock the engine with. So that's why this is basically a headless screw, but screw that in place. That's going to lock you in top dead center, and it's going to let you pull the clutch cover off as well because there's no head on here. All right, next we're going to go back to the uh, alternator side and remove the timing chain tensioner. First we're going to do this screw which has the spring behind it, so uh, by hand and then be ready for the spring to pop out, like that. Next we're going to just pull the tensioner housing off. And there's a gasket there as well. Next we're going to remove the camshaft and the uh, camshaft retaining bracket is up here, it's the black bracket and there's just two screws holding it down. Now just take a little screwdriver and carefully pry this up without damaging the ceiling surface. All right, both sides. There it is. Now, if you, you'll see here that what this does is this lip here, this tab, holds in the camshaft, retains it. That's why it's called a camshaft retaining bracket. Set that aside. And your camshaft will pop loose from the bearings. Uh, there's a, it's sitting in the, some roller bearings there and here as well. And there she is. The timing chain should come off now. Important step, get some safety wire. You don't want the timing chain falling into the engine. So just wrap that safety wire around and uh, a good place to tie it up for now will be the, the cylinder head. So I'm gonna just take the cam out first. There's your camshaft. And now as soon as you let go of this, it's dropping down into the engine case. So don't do that. All right, next we're gonna remove the cylinder head. Uh, for that, it's, um, you have to use uh, an Allen uh, socket or whatever Allen piece you have with a longer, uh, with a long uh, sort of head so, so that you can clear the, the timing drive because um, it's not a lot of clearance here. As you can see, a, a socket is not gonna fit in there. So use a long one 
and loosen those bolts. And then also take out that screw, which is near the timing chain. Once you loosen those in a crisscross pattern when it's tight, you can just pull the head off. Now, uh, your timing chain, you can unsecure it from the head and hold that wire as you're pulling it up. Just uh, keep the wire on there so you can always reach it in case it falls down all right and as you pull this up there goes the chain there's the gasket and there it goes falling inside and that's okay because we have the wire on it so there's your head now actually before you take these bolts out um, get a piece of cardboard mark which uh, which uh, side of the head those go in because these aren't as torqued as much as they are in high capacity engines so they're not stretching probably as much but uh, safe safe than sorry I'm gonna mark these in their original location so I'm gonna put them back where they belong so I'm gonna actually use this piece of cardboard for the valve train uh, I put the, the cylinder head bolts in there, but once we take off the valves and the springs, I'm going to use that for this as well, so the head will go back together the way I put it. That's if I reuse the valves, we're still going to check everything and see if uh, we're changing the valves or not. If we're changing them, then you don't need this. If we're not changing the valves and using the original ones, along with the springs, retainers, the seats, all that stuff, you want them back in the same place. So I'm going to keep this for the entire valve and head uh, assembly. All right, as you take the gasket off, also make sure you remove the dowels, the dowel pins. Those are just locators, basically. Um, if, they're, if they're seized, use a pair of needle nose pliers and take it around the edge. Don't grab it like this because you're going to deform it. Just bite the edge and pull it out. Okay, now we're going to take the cylinder and the piston out. Uh, we're going to use the clutch side now. We're going to fill open the clutch side. Um, so uh, start by making sure your chains and timing chain uh, rails are in a good place. But essentially you just want to start pulling this guy off little by little. The cylinder that is. Use the... Uh, Use the protrusions for leverage. The timing chain uh, tensioner is a good place to grab on. And as this thing starts coming off, go nice and easy. Don't put any tools in there because you're going to scratch the uh, mating surfaces. You don't want to do that. Use your hands. It's not. It shouldn't be stuck seized in there. Okay, and that's going to come off nice and easy. The rails are going to move to the side. Now don't pull this off completely, pull it off uh, and as soon as you see the piston uh, stop, okay? So I'm getting there and you can see now, I can see the piston pin. Take a rag, stuff it in there so uh, you don't have things falling in. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a pick. And we're going to use that little recess to pull that out. All right, I'm actually going to use a small screwdriver instead. Grab hold of it with the needle nose pliers and it just comes out. We're going to be using a new one and to put it back in that's what this thing is for.
and that taps out nice and easy. All right, and once you get it out enough, you don't have to uh, pull, put it all the way out, but the uh, cylinder comes out with the piston. And there's the piston pin. It's out almost all the way. Now, if you have trouble pulling this piston uh, pin out, uh, it, come, it came out this way. Uh, there's actually nothing holding it in. So if it has trouble getting out, just move it back and forth to get the oil sort of uh, spread around. And once you get to the end, it should come out, even though it feels like it's being held in by something, it's not. We'll set that aside, and then we'll actually push, push the piston out through the top of the cylinder and put those aside. There you go. Same deal with the piston, just keep uh, moving it in and out. Um, the rings will sort of keep it in place. You can see them there, but uh, that comes out pretty easy. So if we just do an initial inspection of the cylinder wall, um, one thing you want to look for when you pull it out initially is that there's still a crosshatch pattern and you can see those lines going uh, sort of diagonally in both directions, left and right, down. That's still there and that's actually a really good sign. Next, put your finger, rub it, rub it around the wall and uh, with the fingernail actually. And I feel a little bit of uh, a few ridges at the top of the cylinder, which is to be expected since that's where uh, the piston changes direction. But actually the cylinder is pretty good shape. I mean, it's only the first uh, rebuild, so I'm gonna set that aside. Later on, we're gonna look at the, uh, we're gonna look at the piston and we're gonna measure uh, the width of that. And also we're gonna look at the rings and see if those are uh, still good to go or if we're going to replace them. Probably going to replace them. There's no point in uh, tearing down the engine and not replacing, you know, wear items like the piston rings. All right, we're going to go back to the alternator side. And um, here's a look inside the, the crankcase. There's your camshaft. Now we're actually going to put the rag back in here so that the uh, connecting rod doesn't slap around and damage the surfaces here. All right, make sure the um, locating pins stay in the cylinder. That's those, those guys, because if you start trying to tear those out with pliers, you're gonna deform them and damage them. So keep the locating pins in there. Pull out the timing chain rail. This one comes out for now. And I'll leave this in place. Next we're going to remove the rotor. Uh, first there's a nut and a spring washer. Uh, 17 millimeter. Make sure you have enough leverage with a breaker bar. Now uh, you can see that the rotor has a threaded uh, area here, a lip that we're going to use the special tool. Here's the part number. So this is threaded and since we put that on, we're going to be able to turn the screw and pull off the rotor. All right, once that's snug on there, you don't have to uh, tighten it or anything. Start working that screw. And this is gonna be a uh, 19 millimeter head, hex head.
Now that actually made a popping noise as I pulled it out. Sorry, I didn't get it on video. But um, I'll show you how it's being held in in a minute. All right, that's the rotor magnetized for the stator. And uh, if you check it out here, so the way this is fit on is there's a Woodruff key in here and we'll show you what that is. Basically, it's a small insert into the shaft and inside you get a little, you put in a little key. Now, if you just give that some light taps, since it's wedged in there, with a pick or a small screwdriver and a hammer. It'll eventually come out. Just don't damage the shaft. And there it is. I don't think we damaged anything either. <laughs> so, that's a Woodruff key. And it just inserts right into there. And that's how that's, uh, that rotor is held on tight. All right, next we're gonna take the timing chain out. So we're taking this rail off and this uh, piece both plastic. Yeah, it looks like those have Loctite. All right, pull this one up to the top. This one comes off. And before I take the timing chain out, I'm actually gonna mark the direction of travel in case I reuse it. All right, actually, I'm not 100% sure which direction the chain goes, and probably, uh, probably this way with the wheel direction, but I just put, I just marked it uh, orientation wise, so I'll know that uh, this is the bottom left, that's the top right, in case I reuse this. Now we can pull this off. Alright, next we're going to remove the suction pump. First we're going to take the cover off from the oil pump. And there's the cover. A little bit of oil coming out. Next, we're gonna pull out the uh, external rotor and the internal rotor. And there's a gasket on this cover. All right. There they are. And there's a pin in here that uh, was in this little shaft. Take that out. Now we can pull off the gear position sensor. And we'll turn this around now and pull off the water pump cover. And there she goes. There's a gasket there as well. 
All right, now we're going to take the water, the clutch cover off, uh, which is not the not the small one, but the big one. So all these screws are on. We're just going to pull those off. Okay, there we go. There it is. There's your water pump, gear, the impeller that's there. We've got this gasket. Okay. Take that off. Now before we pull the clutch cover off, it's useful to loosen the nut on the water pump impeller because with the cover in place, there's a gear behind the impeller. And since the engine is locked, we can turn this nut and loosen it without the impeller turning. So we can pull the cover off now and you'll see there's a gear there it's turning freely. Okay, so if uh, turn that nut without the engine locked, you're not going to get it out. Uh, there are two dowel pins here. So uh, one and two stuck in here. So we'll leave those in place for now. And put this aside. All right, next we're gonna remove the clutch. And uh, if you've seen the clutch video, it's pretty much the same deal. We're gonna loosen these screws on the spring retainer and the crisscross pattern. And we'll get this spacer washer thing, the Belleville spring. We're also going to get the pretension ring. There it is. And the pressure plate. And actually the clutch discs will come out as well. Now, pay attention to the dowel pins. Those are coming out as well. That's fine. The throw out bearing. Make sure that's still in good shape. Seems nice. Then we'll pull out the dowels and the clutch pack. There they go. There's the clutch pack. All right, now we're gonna take off the primary gear. And before we do that, we're actually gonna take out the locking screw that's, our, that's keeping us in TDC. Uh, the reason is because this isn't sufficient to lock this thread uh, because again, this is just holding down, this is just rubbing against the fl uh, flywheel or something. So we're gonna remove that. And there is a gear segment, a part number from KTM. Uh, that we can use to lock this because it's moving now uh, and it's the gear segment that goes in there. Unfortunately, I still haven't gotten it because it's on back order. What we're going to use is actually a coin and um, you can use anything that's a soft metal like zinc or copper. Uh, it could be a, a, a nickel or a cent. Uh, the Euro, the Euro uh, cents actually, um, the one and two and five cents are made out of steel but the 10, 20s and 50 cents are made out of copper and I believe zinc. So this is softer than the gear material. And when this goes in there, it's actually gonna deform and um, it's not gonna break the gear teeth like, uh, you know, a steel screwdriver would do. So without a gear segment, this will have to do. And the other thing is that this is a left-hand thread. So to, to loosen it, we're actually gonna have to turn it to the right. This is why as we turn it to the right, this is gonna uh, turn and suck this uh, coin in. All right, this is a uh, 27 millimeter nut.
that was pretty easy actually. Come on. All right, that'll do. That'll come off now. All right, and there, there you go. You did get some blemishes in here, but it didn't even damage the coin. So you don't need too much force to loosen that one. All right, next we're removing the clutch basket, and that's exactly the same as our uh, clutch video. So we're gonna start by bending up these uh, tabs on the lock washer. That should be enough. Okay. Let's try that. I'm actually having such a problem getting this uh, clutch hub nut off that I have to move the whole thing downstairs off the table. And I'm gonna try it with heat now. So I'm gonna warm that nut up to maybe 120. washer all this crap is hot well yeah be really careful don't don't break anything doing that all right well there is the uh the whole deal back on the table now the reason i used a uh a uh infrared temperature sensor is because i really don't want to get this above you know 120 150 because uh the engine case especially, if that has a local heating and it's heated more on one side than the other, you can have warping or even worse cracking. So that's why I tried to get the heat as close as possible to the nut. And the, the infrared uh, temperature uh, instrument is like, I don't know, I think it was 20 or 30. Um, and the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the heat gun, you know, that's just a powerful blow dryer, so, you know, that's really good to have. This is the same deal as before um, in the clutch video. Uh, so we took the hubs off. You'll have the washer. And you'll have uh, the clutch basket. And you'll have some uh, needle bearings here. And the, uh, the race. All right, so we're getting deeper and deeper into that engine. All right, now that we have the uh, the clutch hub off, we can get some of the other gears off. The first one is going to be this uh, starter the starter gear. And it comes off with the washer, some Loctite again. And the intermediate gear just slides off. There's that. Looks like it's a simple plan bearing. All right, next we're going to move to the force pump, which is part of the oil pump. The other side was the suction pump. 
Now we're gonna deal with this guy, which is the force pump. So we're gonna start by removing the sir clip. There it goes. And the washer and the gear. Let's set that aside. All right, and then we have another one here. Flathead. There's that one. Washer and gear. There she goes. All right, now we're gonna take this pin out. Take off these two screws. And off comes the oil pump. There we go, and there will be another pin in there. You can push out the oil pump shaft through the other side of the engine. Make sure we grab that pin. There's the oil pump shaft and the pin. All right, there's the oil pump. All right, now we're gonna remove the uh, shift shaft push this pin inwards so that you uh, free it from the, the shift drum and pull that out with the washer there's your washer shift shaft Okay, now we're going to do the shift drum locating unit, which is basically positions on the shift drum, I believe. Alright, move the locking lever out of the way. There's your shift drum locating unit. Now we're going to get at the locking lever. All right, and that'll come off with a bunch of gear, like the screw, the washer, the lever, the spring, and a sleeve here. So just grab all that out and set it aside. Okay, we're getting closer to splitting the case and last thing here is the primary gear. Uh, we need a puller for that and this is the KTM puller. Here's the part number. And uh, also KTM doesn't want you to damage the crankshaft. Uh, so they have another special tool which is like basically a plastic cap. And that unfortunately is also in ba on back order, but anyway, they, they don't want you damaging thing, this thing, so I just wrapped a few layers of electrical tape because all we're going to be doing is, uh, you know, this this screw is going to be contacting this now when we when we start pulling this off. So uh, the electrical tape should just should do fine since the cap is just plastic anyway. So uh, again, the primary gear wheel is threaded here. That's what we're going to mount this puller to. Just get it on there snug. No point in tightening it. 
and then start screwing in the nut. And that comes off pretty easy actually. I barely put any force into there. Alright, take that off now. And there's your primary gear wheel. We have another Woodruff key. There it is, Woodruff key. All right, and off comes the freewheel gear. Job done there. All right, let's get to removing the left side of the engine case. Now, all we're gonna do here is remove the remaining screws. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three, four. We're gonna take those off. And we're going to mount our puller, our case splitter, onto the alternator, uh, the, the, the spot where the alternator used to go. And we're going to pull it just like we pulled all the other, uh, the other uh, flywheels and jump off. All right, now, actually, you can see we're not gonna be able to take the left side cover off because we're mounted on the engine holder. That means we can take the engine off the holder and uh, proceed with the thing just lying flat on the table. Hey, look at that, good news. I didn't have to take it off the engine stand. All I had to do was uh, take out this bolt and this one, and basically it was going in that way. I just made it go in that way. And now we can mount the right side of the case to the uh, to the stand. All I have to do is take off this retaining nut thing handle here and uh, we can pull the case off now off of these uh, holders. Now we're getting to our uh, super cool um, puller, engine case puller. So I just took some of the screws from the alternator cover you're going to stick that on here. All right, actually I replaced those uh, screws from the alternator cover with the ones from the timing, uh, the uh, chain tensioner and the pot oil pump cover. Those are shorter. These are too long. All right, let's get to pulling. And as the case separates, there's no gasket there, it's just liquid gasket. There we go. The bottom is ah, a little problem here.
Well, I almost destroyed my engine case because I left one screw inside. So, uh, you're welcome for the top tip. Make sure you take all the screws out. Yeah, that would have been fantastic. Let's try this again, right, shall we? Oh, look how easy that is. What a surprise. There she goes. I believe I lost a dowel pin while I was pulling that off. All right, now the engine case here has got a few parts. The dowel is actually right here. That's the one that goes in there. I'm gonna pull that out. And also you're gonna to wanna to pull the spacer out from the, uh, the sprocket shaft here and there's an o-ring as well for that spacer and uh, set that aside along with the engine, ca engine case when you have these engine cases out obviously you're going to have to uh, scrape all the gasket off this is liquid gasket uh, before you put new gasket on as well but let's get to the last part and that's removing the transmission primary and counter shafts or shift drum and our crankshaft. All right, so it's starting to get interesting here because this is the transmission. We're gonna remove the shift rails with the upper and lower springs. The lower springs will probably stick inside there. So we can uh, get those as we take the shift forks out. Now we'll just tilt the shift forks to the side and be careful not to lose the pins. Actually, we are gonna have to pull that, those springs out because they're not letting us uh, get to the, get the shift forks out of the way. So there's one spring. And the second spring. There's your shift drum. Now we'll pull the shift forks out. The rollers in there don't, uh... God damn it. Ah, oh, for crying out loud. Don't, don't do that. All right. There you go, shift forks. All right, now we're taking out the transmission shafts and to get those out, we're gonna pull the, uh, I think this is the primary shaft first and then the counter shaft. And to get to the primary shaft, you can't see here, but there's a circlip. Uh, circlip pliers, just pull the uh, pull that circlip out. And uh, both of these shafts should be coming out now. Now there's washers and uh, lots of gears here. Be careful not to lose them. some washers and 
And there they there they go. No more washers in here. That's good. All right, and we're gonna pull the crankshaft out now. There she is. So that engine is taken apart. Congratulations. And if you're following along, uh, that was harder than it looked, I would say. Yeah.